So the Royal Mint has been going for over 1100 years. We trace our origins back to Alfred the Great. And since that point, we have been producing the coinage of the monarchy. And for each successive monarch, we produced a new coinage portrait. And this, what we're seeing today with the first definitive coinage effigy of Charles III, is just a long line in those monarchs' portraits that we produced over those years. I mean, what we've got to ultimately remember that these are the monarch's coinage. We are His Majesty's Mint, and that's our responsibility to produce the coinage of the monarch. So the monarchs have a say and have an influence in what they get. And that has been throughout history. So if we take this current portrait that we have of Charles III, Charles III himself signed it off, so it's gone in front of the monarch and he has approved it. And as far as we're aware, we believe he's very satisfied with that portrait. So what you're seeing is this long tradition on British coins going all the way back to Charles II when each monarch is faced in the opposite direction to their predecessor. You do have this bit of popular mythology associated with it, this idea that Charles is turning his back on you know, the Republican Cromwell, but we can't say for certain why that tradition originated and there is certainly no rhyme or reason why it continues, but it has become a classic coinage tradition which Charles has followed. We lived in a very unprecedented time during the reign of Queen Elizabeth because of her long, long reign and also because of decimalisation. So after decimalisation in 1971, all we saw in our change was the portrait of Queen Elizabeth. But prior to decimalisation, what people would have been used to is a whole mix of monarchs in active circulation. And even in the 1960s, you could actively come across a coinage portrait of Queen Victoria and even potentially something of William IV. So going back many, many decades. So Queen Elizabeth had five definitive coinage portraits. So those are the ones you actively find in circulation. But in addition to those five definitive portraits, there were numerous commemorative portraits of the Queen that appeared on commemorative coins to mark specific royal occasions, you know, wedding anniversaries or, for example, uh, jubilee events. So we produced a number of those commemorative portraits as well. There's certainly at this moment in time, we've got a demand for circulating coins, and that isn't going anywhere in the immediate future. But in addition to that, we also know there is a very strong demand for commemorative coins. And that goes all the way back to the first commemorative coin that we made, the first modern commemorative coin anyway, which is in 1935. The public have always wanted to mark, in particular, significant royal occasions with commemorative coins. And that's no different with the memorial range of coins that we've got today.